there, bookworms. I'm Tiffany, and this is Towering TBR. I had a superb reading month in the month of February. I devoured nine awesome things, and I'd love to tell you about them. One of them broke my heart. Another one had me completely immersed in the audiobook. And another had me wanting to learn more about recent history. So let's dive in. So these books broke my heart. This took me a long time to prioritize because the, the writing is very cramped in here and that can make it visually a little bit difficult to read. But I'm so glad I finally got to it. These are so important and everybody should be reading these. They're so good. In the first volume, Art is uh, illustrating his family. All of the Jews are portrayed as mice and the Nazis are displayed as cats. I thought this was really creative because how Nazis would talk about Jews as if they were vermin, I felt it was kind of a, a smart way to like maybe reclaim that a little bit. So in the first volume, his father Vladek is living in Poland as a Jew. And fortunately, he is pretty well off. And so he is able to bribe himself to be in better situations in the beginning. And in the second volume, he uh, documents his time during Auschwitz in the concentration camps. There are obviously a lot of trigger warnings. This is harrowing stuff, hauntingly compelling. And these are a must read, especially as Nazism is making a resurgence. We, we need to recognize the signs and prevent humans from repeating history. Absolutely five stars. I am a huge fan of Schitt's Creek, and so I decided to pick up Best Wishes and Warmest Regards, written by Daniel and Eugene Lovey. They are the two actors behind creating Schitt's Creek, and just, this was such a, a joy to read. I'm going to set this down, but I will include photos for you. There are so many behind-the-scenes stories from the different actors and the costumers and the makeup artists. We have information about wigs and fashion and tidbits behind different stories. A favorite of mine was in the second episode, Eugene Levy um, is supposed to be awakened, annoyed by a drip and gets his hair and his nightgown all wet. And Dan had a lot of fun because writing that scene, he was like, oh, make sure his hair is soaked. Uh, because he knew it would make his, his dad irritated. It's his dad's pet peeve doesn't like his hair wet. And uh, Eugene said something along the lines of, I didn't even have to act. I was genuinely <laughs> upset. And I, I thought it was just fun learning little trivia and behind the scenes stuff. We also found out that an actor was able to discover their sexuality because of one of the episodes that they participated in. There is like, uh, lots of fan art that I just absolutely loved. And if you like Schitt's Creek, I think you should pick it up because it was just, just an utter joy to read. Another book I picked up that I enjoyed, all of these are four and fives, so no bad apples at all. But I picked up Like a Charm by Elle McNichol. This is a middle grade fantasy adventure story. The story is about Ramia. She has a unique ability in that she will not be compelled by sirens. And her grandfather leaves her this book about magical creatures after he dies and intends for her to learn about the different magical creatures and to kind of create this compendium about them. But Ramia finds out that the sirens are up to something and she needs the magical creatures to team up together to help take them down. It was just so charming. Like, that's punny, but it's true. It was such an enchanting story. I also read Disoriental by Nagar Javadi. I buddy read this with Audrey over from Audrey Approved. So this is a rich tapestry filled with different threads of family identity, history, and belonging. This is set against the backdrop of the Iranian Revolution of 1979. This is semi-autobiographical, and we're focusing on Kimia, 
uh, a young Iranian girl whose parents are political activists. They start to get in some hot water, and so they have to escape and flee to France. The the story is incredibly fractured. We get bits and pieces of her life growing up in Iran and what it was like to grow up in France and what her adult like life looks like now. There was also a modern timeline where she is sitting in a doctor's office waiting to do IVF. I've thought that timeline was less intriguing. It definitely tied together the themes of identity. And if you like sprawling family sagas, I would definitely recommend it. Totally by chance, I decided to pick up Hard by a Great Forest by Leo Bardiashvili. We're following a man called Saba who lived in Georgia, the country, not the state. And in 1991, civil war breaks out in Georgia. And Saba, his brother Sandro, and his father Arakli all are able to flee to England, but unfortunately the mother has to stay behind. Then we are in the modern timeline and Arakli has gone back to Georgia to uncover some family secrets and he has gone missing. And so Sandro then goes looking for him, but he disappears too. So it's up to Saba to go back to Georgia and to find his missing brother and father. He goes to the police for help, but they are obviously corrupt, don't want to help him at all, and take his passport, threatening that he might not ever be able to leave Georgia again. Fortunately, he has an ally in Nodar, who is his cab driver who takes him um, home from the airport. And together they team up to search for clues that Sandro has left to try and figure out what has happened to the family and where they have gone. There are really strong fairy tale links within this book. Something that lent even more surreal feelings is the zoo was recently flooded and um, lots of animals are just roaming the city. A surreal story that swept me away. I picked up The Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden. I loved Catherine Arden's The Bear and the Nightingale trilogy and I was incredibly hyped for this. I will say that although her writing is still atmospheric, it is not really very magical. And that disappointed me a little bit. So we are following a brother and sister who are fighting in World War I. Laura is a nurse on the front lines and her brother is a soldier. Laura is wounded and is sent back to Canada to recover. And shortly after, she receives her brother's things saying that he had gone missing in battle and he was presumed dead. However, a seance somehow indicated that he is not dead. And Laura decides she is going to go back to Belgium to the front and look for her brother and figure out what's going on. We get to see a supernatural character, which did help with the atmosphere, I will say. The depiction of PTSD and grief and the horrors of a swiftly changing battlefield, like, it really brought the horrors of World War I alive. There was kind of a romance that was shoehorned in a little bit at the end, but it didn't really detract from my enjoyment too much. Uh, I would recommend this, and but it's definitely more historical fiction rather than paranormal. And finally, we have come to my two rereads. I reread Boy Swallows Universe by Trent Dalton. I first read this four years ago and absolutely loved it. And I re-listened to the audiobook and this is the one that completely immersed me in the setting. Uh, The narrator has a very thick Aussie accent and that really increased my enjoyment of this. I would recommend you go that route if you want to read it. So this is a coming of age story for young Eli Bell. He is 12 and living in 1980s Brisbane, Australia. He has kind of a weird home life. His mother and his mother's boyfriend are heroin drug dealers. His babysitter is named Slim. He's an ex-convict who has the nickname uh, Houdini of Bago Road because he has escaped the prison many times before. And he also has an older brother named August. August kind of has this magical, mystical air around him. He doesn't speak. 
he communicates non-verbally or by writing letters in the air. I don't know. There's something sort of magical about him, but we don't really fully understand why. There are some really bizarre components to this story, including crime, but I, I found it to be an incredibly compelling page turning story and loved it. Can't wait for you guys to read it if you are interested. And I'm definitely thinking I'm going to watch the Netflix adaptation because this is just such a great story. I hope they do it justice. My last reread was A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Becky Chambers is one of my favorite authors and this is my absolute favorite book of hers. So definitely five stars. We focus on a ship known as the Wayfarer and it has a mixed human and alien crew. And basically the ship is designed to punch holes in space to create shortcuts throughout the universe. And on this long journey to go make uh, a shortcut, we get to see how the crew gets along, um, what their cultures are like on different planets. We even stop off on a few planets. And her inclusivity just, it feels effortless. She is a master of world building, a master of characters. Such such a joy to reread this. It was like a warm hug rereading this. I vastly underestimated how much I love rereading and I'm glad I'm making this a project this year. World building is exquisite and I really liked looking at the different mores of the different alien cultures and how they differed from humanity. I can't say enough good stuff. Read it, read it, read it. So as you can see, I had an excellent reading month. Do any of these reads pique your interest? Definitely let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know what you read in February. Anything great? Let's have a chat about it in the comments down below. Thank you so much for joining. Bye.